This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Brooklyn, New York, weighing 175 pounds, the radioactive poppy, Danny Limelight. You know, Tony, interesting story about Danny Limelight. You know, I actually met him a few years ago when he was in the U.S. Marine Corps serving overseas in Iraq. How about that? Yeah, you know, he's a first degree martial arts uh, drill instructor. Yeah, and uh, I'm always excited about athletes that come here and have the military background, you know? Yeah. I know you spent a lot of time overseas with military, and we can talk more about that. But here's Justin Roberts one more time. And his opponent from Valley Village, weighing 168 pounds, Jungle Boy. Yeah, here we go, Jungle Boy, part of Jurassic Express and Danny Limelight, our very first match ever here on AEW Elevation. Tony Schiavone and Paul White together for the first time ever here on our YouTube channel. We are gonna have a great time bringing you some of the new stars that maybe you've never seen before or maybe that you are seeing making their way up the ladder in AEW. You have to say Jungle Boy is actually the AEW workhorse. Had 61 matches competed in here at AEW. The most matches at any other talent here at AEW. He's a workhorse. How about that? And he's only five years into the sport. That says a lot, doesn't yeah, it? He's going to be grizzled real soon. Yeah, he really is. And of course, he's uh, quite a sensation. We've seen some great matches. We've seen him on Dynamite have Dax, the Axe Harwood of FTR tap out. He was in the very end of the Casino Battle Royal Tag Team match at Revolution recently, so. Definitely, I was pulling for him in that. I yeah. mean, I was really, what a lot of heart he showed that night. Absolutely, heart is what it's all about. He starts out with a side headlock. Aubrey Everett, your referee. Good to have you with us. Shoulder block takedown. Limelight can do a lot of great things. You mentioned his military background, his uh, black belt background. He can, look, look at that. Well, he's a close quarters combat hand-to-hand -hand expert. So, you know, he's gonna have a lot of ways out of situations that people that aren't as experienced won't have. Look at the athleticism. I love that. I used to do a nip up a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you doing that as a matter of fact. Nowhere near as good as Jungle Boy though. What an athlete. This is amazing after all the years apart, here we are back together. I know, it's uh, it's actually perfect. You know, you got me when I was very green in the business and first starting and couldn't find my way to the ring. Right. And now I can't find my way to the broadcast booth, so it's us all over again. Well, you're going <laughs> to learn it very, very quickly. Very quickly. Nice. Love the athleticism of these guys. Look at that drop kick. That was a chin-high drop kick. The timing was unbelievable. Limelight trying to pull himself up, and a big chop that time by Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy just so talented, so young, 23 years of age. I love it. Well, there you go. Danny Limelight showing a little nip up, a little athleticism, the little dance. Now, here's another fact. Limelight is older than Jungle Boy, but he's also only had only five years experience. He started in the military when he was age 17 and spent 10 years of service. Yeah. Definitely appreciate and thank him for his service. You know what I love here, you see how you know Jungle Boy is settling things down a little bit, trying to get a hold, trying to wear limelight down. That's smart. Sometimes you can get a little bit crazy in there. You want to feel the guy out, feel his timing. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Opportunity taken. Opportunity taken. A lot of times it's good to do that. He got him in the corner here now. Here's rapid fire kicks here from Danny Limelight using some of that black belt that he knows. Oh! Jungle what Boy. I, I love about both of these guys, they're both attacking the upper chest area, which, you know, I don't know if the fans at home understand. Those impacts to the chest actually affect your breathing as the match continues. So by doing those strikes to the chest, the kicks, the chops, it's kind of a chest game for later on the match when it's hard to get a breath, that tight chest will play a factor. And then the chokehold using the legs. Oh, wow, and a nice. That was nice and solid. Get a cover here. Looks a far leg only gets a one count out of and Jungle Boy comes right out of it. Jungle Boy, of course, being a part of Jurassic Express, really known more as a tag team wrestler, but of course, that does not take away from what he's been able to do in singles competition. Yeah, well, even with, Jura with Luchasaurus, they're the number three ranked tag team in AEW. So, I mean, Luchasaurus is such a powerhouse. It's a great combination when you got Jungle Boy's athleticism and Luchasaurus's power. Uh, it's no surprise that they're at the top of the AEW tag team rankings. Again, they're attacking the chest here. This comes in big to play because later on when you need to get that breath, 
it's going to be hard to get it with attacks like this. We are coming to you on AEW Elevation here on YouTube, a brand new program. Yours truly, Tony Schiavone and Paul White together. For the first time, we're going to be taking a look at some of the young up and coming talent making their way up the ladder or up the elevator, so to speak. Up the elevator, I like yeah, it. Trying to make their way to the top here. And of course, we know that Jungle Boy has certainly, has, we, we talked about this, third highest total of wins, but Danny Limelight, a chance to make a name for himself here. Oh, double stomp on the chest. Double stomp on the chest again. I like what they're doing. Both of them are kind of attacking the same, and they're going after that breathing, that ability to take a breath. Because they know they're similar in athleticism. So if you can stop a guy from breathing, you can win a match. I mean, of course. So a little bit of showing off, feeling the crowd. Uh, high risk, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you, you, you pick catch the wrong end of the knees on that one. Our main event coming up is going to be a dandy. I can tell you that. Watch out, no. Trying for the head scissor takeover. Jungle Boy holding tight. Nice counter. That's sort of a good bit of Jungle Boy's power, too, to counter that back into an offensive maneuver with a side backbreaker. That was good. Deceptive power. Our main event coming up later on is going to be Riho, former AEW Women's Champion, against Maki Ito. So that should be sensational. We have seen, of course, a lot of Rio. Maki Ito made her AEW debut recently on Revolution. To the delight of many fans, she is something special. Nice, nice. Now, right there, you see how Jungle Boy kind of waited for Danny to come in. Right. That's the experience with having over 61 matches here in AEW. He knew where he was in the ring, knew his timing, took advantage of that experience. That was good. Pick up, fall behind at Danny Limelight. Ripcord nice. attempt that time. Ducks pick up. Boy, Limelight's quick. Ooh, right to the throat he goes. Oh, again, they're going for that breathing. That's awesome. Tried to roll him up. Kind of missed it, but he still has him up. And into a single leg crab. Got a single leg crab out of him. You know, that's the thing. Sometimes you plan something. It doesn't work out. You got to keep moving. Got to think on your feet and get what you can. I like him pulling to the center of the ring, keep him from getting to the ropes. Wear him down. This is where that endurance comes in now. There you see Marco. And Jungle stuck. Boy made it to the ropes. Marco kind of reaching out his hand, letting Jungle Boy know how close he was to the ropes. But he, as you can see, still feeling the effects. And uh, you know, you talk about those chops and the breathing. We saw the the choke basically using the legs. Jungle Boy really uh, gasping for air right here. Yep, this is the part where it plays. Look at that power. And he just threw him right off. Is what he did. Yeah. Deceptively strong for his size. That's good to know. Ooh, back and forth they go on the very dangerous part of this ring, the apron. Limelight. That was a pump kick that time. Yeah, these guys are right on the edge here. And a pickup and a back body drop falls over to the other apron, hits him on the back of the head. Limelight may have the advantage here on the outside using the. Oh, the oh my goodness, that was creative. Well, that's using the environment around you. Yeah, and using basically like a Hurricane Rana coming off of the apron that time and sending Jungle Boy down as Marco Stunt tries to uh, revive him on the outside. Let's take a look one more time. I think Jungle Boy hits a railing here pretty hard and he hits it again there. Now you see Luchasaurus and Marco Stunt. I don't know what Marco Stunt's going to do with that shoe off. <laughs> I think Marco Stunt's a little protective and a little anger on that one. You know, he's got quite a temper. I mean, obviously, he's the smallest we have here in AEW, but that, that will not stop Marco Stunt. No, he may be small, but he's got a huge heart. He's he, a heck of a competitor. He really is. Look at the limelight walking the middle rope, bouncing, bouncing on the top. Oh, wow. Caught him, and here's the cover. That One, could be it. two. two. No. Oh, that was a barely a kick out. Jungle Boy is gasping right here. He really needs to dig deep, find where he, find out where he is in the ring, get his position, and get himself back together. You know, this is where guys on the ring apron like Luchasaurus and Marco Stunt can really help Jungle Boy figure out where he is and get his composure back right now. Yeah, if nothing else, to try to coach him, pump him up, give him more motivation. Motivation, definitely. That yeah, certainly helps, I would think, in the later stages of the match. Yeah. Big forearm shot that time. Maybe a closed fist to the jaw. From this angle, not sure. A reversal in and a running knee strike. Or lifting out of the corner with that knee strike. And here he comes again. Walking up top again. Ooh. And a, a form of a DDT, oh, but into a brain buster was suplex. That brain buster. Double underhook this time. He's got him up. 
Well, it's amazing how Jungle Boy turned the momentum that quick. Now he's taking, now he's taking away the his weapon. Yep. Well, that was quick. That was amazing. No, this Jungle Boy's experience came through on that. Jungle one, I think. Boy. He calls it the snare trap. <laughs> it's a form of the STF, maybe in a way, a cross face. He made it leg. his own, and he got into it quick because it was there, and he took advantage of it. You know. Take a look once again, Paul. Nice brain buster. Well done. And he, he immediately went into that snare trap. Immediately. It didn't take Danny Limelight. Didn't take, didn't take him long at all. And that's a guy with a mixed martial art background who tapped out that quick. Your winner in the opening bout on the debut of Elevation is the one and only Jungle Boy. And that is 38 wins for him. Jungle Boy, the winner of the opening bout here on AEW Elevation. It's great to work with my good friend, calling G, Paul White. My gosh, your hands. I you love are, it, Corey. Thank you, you so much for having me. Yeah, it's great having you here. We're going to have Maki Ito and Rio, Rio coming up in our main event later on. But the excitement about what we're doing is giving wrestlers all across the world, maybe they're on the independent circuit or maybe they're, they're signed just beginning here with AEW, a chance to come on TV and prove what they can do. And that's important for developing their career and finding out who they are is getting that television experience, learning that ability to communicate with the audience. If you make the audience emotionally invested, that's how you become a star. So we have plenty of matches for in our debut program. Right now, we're ready for our next match. Let's go back to Justin Roberts. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by Penelope Ford. At a combined weight of 461 pounds, the team of Superbad, Kip Sabian, and the best man, Miro. <laughs> you know, that's gotta be one of the most, that's gotta be the, one of the scariest sights ever to see him walk out with that demeanor, with that stare. He's yeah. intimidating. You know, I know Miro very well. I've competed against him in the past. And right now, what I've seen in the past few weeks is an unreal focus and almost a rage is coming out of him. He's on a mission right now. And their opponents had a combined weight of 375 pounds, a team of Baron Black and Vane Morales. Well, both these young men, Morales and Black, have not yet picked up a win here in AEW. Story about Baron, as you see Morales sticking his head in. Barry's a man of mystery from Juarez. Baron Black, initially trained by Curtis Hughes in Atlanta. And so here are two young men who really had their work cut out for him here. And of course, Kip Sabian at 20 and 17 here in AEW at 28 years of age. And he goes right to the attack quickly. Nothing wrong with getting a quick start. No, nothing wrong with it. Why stand around and chat? You're here to compete. Yeah, be aggressive. I agree. Morales just hammered down by Sabian, who has such a surly, confident, cocky attitude and can perform in the ring as well. Great snap suplex. Yeah, well, it's, it's not cocky if you can back it up. Well, if you can't back it up, you can always tag in the monster over there. That's and, true. And he can tag or back up just about anything. Yes, he can. Pick picks up. Tried his maneuver that time, but it was countered that time by Morales. Vari Morales ducks under. Kip goes to the rope. Great takeover that time. Hit scissor takeover. In Seguri, right to the dome. And a cover. One, two. Oh, uh, that was one. Got, <laughs> got the rope. Boy, that'll scare you off a of yeah, cover. Does. <laughs> that doesn't make you want to move to a different zip code. Nothing Man, does. I tell you, I just, and here's Baron Black now. Baron Black is six foot two sixteen. Big, big uppercut that time, European uppercut, if you will. And then the knife edge chop just really seemed to get Kip even more pissed off here. Back up against the ropes. Boy, Kip finding the mark with these chops. Now, yeah, they are sounding off, aren't they? Yeah, they, he started this match. He's taken really command of this match. And obviously, we have seen the problems develop. And, and they develop, watch this, roll up. Too close to uh, Miro that time. Miro reached in. And good 
turn that time back Perrin Black. <laughs> He's just being manhandled by Miro here. Yeah, well, you can't, you know, that's the thing that young tag teams make the mistake all the time. If you're going to do stuff like that, keep it on your side of the ring. When you're too close to the opponent's ring, they can interfere and mess things up for you. This past week on Dynamite, oh boy, backstabber that time. Got a two count. Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor have challenged Miro and Kip to just one more match. One more match. Last time it was a brutal affair. And of course, this has been all about revenge. This has all been all about what they did. I'm talking about Kip and Miro. Good move by Morales that time and a great kick in the face. What they did, first of all, to Trent, and then the interruption or the destruction, if you will, of Penelope and Kip's wedding. So it's been personal. Well, it's definitely very personal with those guys. And not only that, that's the best kind. <laughs> when the fight's personal. Oh. When it's personal. Then when it stops being about money and it starts being about pride, then it gets serious. Yes, that's exactly right. Look, Miro just calling shots here. Kip has been doing everything in the ring. And Miro's saying, all right, stomp his leg, stomp his foot. I'm a little surprised by Kip, who's got the tape on his shoulder. To me, right away, I would attack that shoulder because that's kind of, you know, it was pointing out that there's something wrong with that shoulder. Unless that's a bait and switch and it's decorative, but to me, I think that's something wrong with his shoulder. Yeah, but the fact is, Kip has stayed on the offense so much that Morales has not had a chance to even attack the shoulder or any other part of the body. Look at Kip trying to go up top here now. Morales fighting in this neutral corner. Big forearm shot, got him down. That's been his best offense thus far. He comes up top with nice. a big missile drop kick from the top. He's trying to take advantage of the tag out or get that cover. Veteran referee. Or Rick stop Knox. Kip from tagging Miro. Well, for one, grab well, that foot. Well, here he it's comes. too late now. Look at the agility of the guy this All size. Right. He's such a monster. And that's a veteran move. Clear the corner. Make sure there can be no interference. <laughs> well, he's flipped out here now. Yeah, somebody. Uh, <laughs> Somebody put too much caffeine in his espresso. Oh my God. That double fist to the chest. Look at the anger and the rage. That's it, the rage, Paul. You know, I've known Miro a long time. I don't think I've ever seen this upset ever. Man, he just. You know, I he, mean, when he gets like this, he, he, he is literally unstoppable. Who can stop this guy? You know, <laughs> i tell you one thing. It, if I was Kenny Omega, the world champion, right now, I would be really concerned about a guy like Miro getting motivated and coming after my title. Anybody. Darby Allen? Yeah, true. There you go. Oh, there's his move. It's called the time turner from Kip. And it gets the win. And there's no on. stopping time with that. Yes, sir. How about the winners that? of this match, the team of Miro and Kip Sabian. How about the viciousness of Miro? So Penelope can stay on the outside. And he gives a hug. And here it is, the replay again, Paul. Nice. Wow, that's it. the time turner. That's what it is, man. I like it. It's innovative and effective. That's all you can ask for. As Penelope stands on the outside, let's take it back to Alex Marvez standing by with QT Marshall. QT Marshall, you will be part of history by wrestling on the very first episode of AEW Elevation against Marco Stone. But before I ask you about that match, you got to find out what's going on with you and the Nightmare family. You walked out on Dustin Rhodes of Revolution. You walked out on Lee Johnson on Dynamite. What gives? Alex, if you keep asking about the Nightmare family, I might just walk right out of this interview if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Alex. I'm just kidding. Tonight, it's Elevation. Let's worry about that, right? QT versus Marco Stone. We got Paul White. We got Tony Schiavone. This is one of the biggest... Well, maybe not one of the biggest matches if you know what I'm talking about, Marco, you know? Just kidding, Alex. I'm having a great time. I promise you, I promise everybody, there is nothing wrong with the Nightmare family. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Clearwater, Florida, Big Swole. Then you don't get fired up when Big Swole comes to the ring. Something's wrong with you. She is a bundle of energy. Bundle of energy, bundle of confidence, too. 
know, Big Swole was talking on dark that she's looking for another opportunity for that women's championship. She was the number one ranked contender for Carl Sheeta's Women's World Championship in January. But something happened, and we'll talk about that after this. And our opponent from Norman, Pennsylvania, Skylar Moore. Here's Skylar Moore, only her third year of experience here in AEW, but Big Swole gradually fell out of the rankings altogether when forced to miss almost two months of complications from Crohn's. And she's battled through that. She, of course, we've been well documented. She spent time in the Air Force, became a pro wrestler after her service in the Air Force was done. We can definitely tell she's in shape, she's fit. You know, her, her confidence is definitely running wild right now, so she's in a good spot. You know, it's tough when you get knocked out of that championship run. You're, you're used to being in the mix, and then when something takes you out, you got to work your way back into it. But uh, sometimes that's a confidence thing, and I don't think Big Swole is lacking any confidence right now. Swole has won 13 of her last 14 matches, 13 and 1 so far. Her only loss was to Sheeta in a world title match on Dynamite last October. So she's been battling the health issues, there's no question. But she's a fighter, as we've said. And yeah, she's working that hammer lock. Working that arm, working those shoulder blades, that middle back. Now that she's able to do this with that, those long locks that, that, that are just seemingly, I, to me, they'd be in your way. I would think they would be in the way too, yeah. but you know, maybe that's part of the part of the advantage. Maybe it gets in her opponent's way. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Skyler trying to battle out that good waist lock. Here's Skyler trying to do like a little standing switch. Nope, back elbow, nice snapmare ba takeover. Snapmare takeover, love that. Oh, a little. A little taunting. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Missed the big elbow that time. Swole didn't miss Whoa. that one though. That was the athleticism right there. Stays focused. That's the thing that the younger people do sometimes when they're in the ring, they lose focus. They, they, they miss connect on showboating and getting the job done. Oh, she, uh, uh, the old cliche goes pillar to post. Yeah, definitely taking advantage of her environment. Absolutely. Oh, swole. The, the name comes from her outrageous personality. Yes, why does she call herself Big Swole? Well, she is Big Swole. She's Big Swole. She introduced herself to me as Big Swole and let me know that she was Big Swole. <laughs> yes, she is. Good move that time by Skyler Moore. Interesting you know. technique using the ropes. I get it, but you're going to have to break the hole. You know, this is one of those kind of things that works for short term advantage. But right now, she needs to get in the ring and attack Big Swole because Big Swole is not someone you can let slide. Skyler with a cover. Skyler trained at the Team 3D Academy in Kissimmee. Oh, yeah. I know those guys. Yeah, absolutely. So she's had a good, she's had some great training. She can really make a name for herself here on Elevation. And sometimes you can make a name for yourself, Paul, without even winning a match sometimes. You just make a good showing and, and show that you got the character. Boy, she, she's doing a lot of taunting here. A lot of taunting, and that's kind of a rookie thing. Sometimes that happens. But, you know, like you said, you can make a name for yourself by just building a little bit of consistency and establishing a presence. And I think that's what Skyler's trying to do right now is show that she's got a presence, show that she's someone that needs to be reckoned with in the ring. She's doing a great job of, of attacking Swole's leg, which that's her wheels. You take her wheels out, she can't run. She's taking away that athleticism. Cover, hooking a far leg that time. and got a two count. Mike Posey is your referee here on AEW Dark Elevation, where we feature some of the great up and coming stars, some of the young people trying to make their way up through the ranks. Good job, Skyler, going back to that leg, working that knee joint. Working that ankle, very good. Now, anytime you can debilitate someone as athletic as Big Swole, it's working to your advantage. She could be trying to neutralize Dirty Dancing as well, which is Swole's Big primary finish. weapon, yes, sir. Yeah. If she can take Dirty Dancing out of it, she really stands a good chance of what you could probably say with her experience level might be a little bit of an upset. I think it's interesting that we see on the uh, ringside area, Vicky Guerrero, the, <laughs> the manager of Nyla Rose just watching this match intently. Yeah, Vicky's definitely old school. She's scouting right now. Sure. Trying to keep an eye on, on Big Swole and Skyler. 
Hitting the ropes. Good. Oh, look up. at that power. Look at the there. power. Very impressive. Boy, Skyler knows where she is, too. She knows where the camera is. She turned her right to the camera to show everyone her wow. power. Impressive. Great power. Good job. Skyler got a two count out of that. Great wing, ring awareness, too. You know, knowing where we are, knowing where that hard camera is, knowing where the ropes are. You know, sometimes that's a natural instinct. Sometimes it takes some people a little longer to get. Good roll up nice by Swole. Only Better got a move. Oh, that rung her bell. That got her attention. <laughs> little paintbrush action that time. Swole. How you doing? My name is Big Swole. Uppercut Still minute. selling that knee, though. That yeah. knee is a factor right now. Yeah, that knee is hurting, man. She is. Picking up some momentum. Look how quick she is, man. And a headbutt out of that. Pretty good counter on Skyler, too, to anticipate that. Absolutely. Boom! There it is. Nice. Dirty Dancing finishes it up for Big Swole. No winner of this match. Big That's Swole. That's a great showing by Skyler, too. It was. Skyler looked good, man. But Big Swole on her way back with Dirty Dancing. Love her attitude, man. Let's take a look at it again, Paul. Dirty dancing and you're done. Yeah. Wow. Great punch. Wow. She uh, she definitely had some mustard on that one. <laughs> Big Swole is your winner. Yeah, things looking real good here, Butch. You're getting the job done. Keep it up, huh? Why can't I get it? Hey, you know the rules. Go get yourself a jacket. When all I'm black, uh, I'm a stats man myself, and the stats say we should put it on red. <laughs> We're the Dark Order. Are you ready to play? <laughs> I'm ready to win. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Olive Branch, Mississippi, weighing 120 pounds, Marco Stunt. Hey, gets a little pat of encouragement on the back from Luchasaurus, and here is Marco Stunt. All 5'2", 121 pounds of him. I tell you, you're gonna love this guy with his enthusiasm and his heart. You know, they always say, the Oakley say, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. This guy is all fight. I love him. And his opponent from the Big Apple, weighing 234 pounds, Q.T. Marshall. Nick Camarado comes out with Q.T. Marshall, and, and I, it's going to give him a little fist bump, let him go by himself. And uh, very, very interesting. We heard from a Q.T. earlier with Alex Marvez, who claims there's nothing wrong within the Nightmare family, but he has turned his back now twice, as we have seen, first of all, on Dustin, on Revolution, and then recently on Lee Johnson, on dynamite so i don't know if there's anything wrong or not he's denying it we're looking for this match qt marshall 16 years experience he can do a lot of great things in the ring paul yeah you know there's a little bit of a size and height and weight and advantage here you know i'm going to tell you though i'm going to root that's the power wow that uh that's not really looking good for marco stunt right there when you got that kind of size disparity usually i'm on the other end of it i'm the guy doing the pushing the smaller guy down Right. Goodness gracious. You know, Marco Stunt's got to be a rubber band to survive all this.
It was a move like that on the mat that broke Marco's ankle a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, actually. Marco going for that single leg, and I'm telling you. Oh, my. That, <laughs> you know, and here's the thing about Marco. He comes right back with, the, with that aggression, comes right back. He's not intimidated. Wow. Wow. That, That'll get your attention. You're oh. not kidding. It, it, it seemed like at first that QT Marshall was just playing with him. But then when he got slapped in the face, he kind of turned it on, didn't he? It changes the tempo, you know. Sometimes you can do that and get in an opponent's head and make them make a mistake. But right now, I think, you know, Marco Stunt's got to be real careful what he puts himself in a position for. Look at that. Look at that. You know, I'm known for doing that move myself. Are you sure. really? <laughs> no. I've seen many of your matches. Well, I appreciate I, it. And you could do uh, amazing things for a man your size. Not too bad, but I love the athleticism of Marco yeah. Stunt. And he's tenacious. You know, he's going to sink his teeth in, and he's not going to let go. Great, great move that time for a drop kick as QT Marshall was getting up. Here goes Marco up on top again, doing what he knows. But QT's up. Marco caught him that time, did QT. Trying to backslide him over. Trying to get that sunset flip. Yeah, talking about a flip. Oh, my. wow. He just, he spun him in midair to a backbreaker. Well, that's the thing. You know, Paul Marco stunt just doesn't have any leverage in a situation like this. Let's take a look at it once again, Paul. Wow, man, that's. There's nothing Marco can, stunt can do in that position because there's no leverage. He's being thrown in the air. He's, he's wrestling a guy twice his weight. Um, you know, you just got to admire the integrity and the courage of Marco Stunt for this, you know, and, and hopefully Marco, I would suggest if I was ringside right now, I'd tell him to go for a knee. You got to take this guy out. If he can't see, if he can't breathe and he can't walk, you stand a chance. QT Marshall seems to be uh, kind of angry here. Yeah, he's proven a point. Look at the fight in Marco yeah, Stunt. Man. I tell you, it's going to take a lot more than that to keep him down. Yeah. You know, and he's really attacking that lower back region on Marco Stunt. He's trying to take that high flying ability away from him. You know, those those lower back shots are not necessarily spine shots. Those are also kidney shots. You know, and that can really, really suck the air out of you. Very innovative. The knees at the top of the skull. I like that. That's a unique way to fight out of it. Good go behind. Good go behind. We got to see a roll up. No. Nope. Gut wrench roll up that time. But no. Oh, there you go. Like an enziguri. That was an the head. Without a post. I dig it. Pick up again. Oh, oh, wow. Good night. Knock him on the way down. Yeah. Marco Stunt needs to send someone out to find his jaw after that shot. Marco's seeking his first win here in 2021. He's 0 and 4. And he just oh, casually wow. lifted that. Look at this again. Bam. You know, that would have been over if that wasn't a lazy cover by Key 2. Q Q QT? QT. How about that? Yes. I'll get it. Don't worry about it, Tony. I'll get it. And there's Paul Turner with warning the hair, but QT is not going to heed this at all. You know, that's the thing about that rule when a referee gives you a warning, you've got five seconds to comply. Listen, I've bent those rules too. There's a lot of damage you can do in five seconds, especially in four and a half. QT, lead trainer of the Nightmare Family Wrestling School in Norcroft, Georgia. Trained, of course. Nice lead chin buster. Good yep. fight back. Good fire. Look at the heart. Oh, Man. right back to that jaw. Look at him get, let him try to get right back up too. I think he may have opened up a cut in his mouth. Now, sure. there's a 115 pound weight difference and advantage for QT Marshall right here. 115 pounds. The end of the ropes they go. There's the quickness. Nice. Man, pulling through that time. And Marco, oh, missed it. Might have saw that movie. Might have saw that move coming. He bounced up again. Good nice cross, cross body. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Across the bottom rope. Running knee that strike that time by Marco Stunt. Whoa! How almost. That? That's so close. He almost got his first victory. Almost. Wow. Would that have been a big upset? Man, yeah. QT Marshall has been certainly, I don't know, upset at Dustin, upset at, at Lee Johnson. I'm not sure. But that would have not fared well for him at all. Pick up again, just over his shoulder. Rolls him up. Easily kicks out in two. Here comes Marco again. And. Oh, my God. 
nice counter. Wow. Oh. Turned the backdrop. Wow. Into Two. Like a code red in oh, that was close. Almost a three count. I love it. You know, I love how innovative Marco Stun is. And here's the thing Marco's having to react to a lot of these things and make this stuff up as he goes. Yeah. You know, that shows his innovation, that shows his heart, shows his drive. You know, right now he needs to dig, he, right now he needs to dig deep. Look at this counter. Yeah, turned it into Canadian Destroyer here. Look at Canadian that. Canadian Destroyer. I love it. And almost got himself a win out of it. Marco continues now to fight. Spin kick that time. Picked up by QT here oh, off the ropes. Boom! Oh. It's a diamond cutter. That's a big time cutter. That's it all. It sure goes. is. One. Wow. No winner of this match. QT Marshall. We've seen a new side to QT lately. That diamond cutter, which was given to him by Diamond Dallas Page, he used it. And now what do we got here? Oh, this is completely unnecessary. We got the Hollywood hunk in here. We got Peter Avalon, pretty Peter. Cesar Bononi yeah. is QT in. QT doesn't care at all. He's walking away. He's not even interested. No, he's not even helping Mark go out. And yeah. finally. Luchasaurus comes in. You see the you see the hyenas run. QT the, used to be a nice guy. What's wrong with him now? Something's in his head. He's got something going on in his head. I tell you, tomorrow night on Dark, we're going to see Luchasaurus and big Cesar Bononi go at it. Little preview of it right now as Bononi walks away. Your winner is QT Marshall. Right now, here's a look at Lee Johnson here on Elevation. Peter Cody Avalon Cody. was looking for the martinis. The double knees to the back of the head. Lee Johnson rolls him up. One, two, three. Lee what? Tonight. Shawty Lee truly maximized his minutes. That first win was unbelievable. It was something that I dreamed about every single week. Lee, I know this is a very emotional time for you. First win, and it comes here on Dynamite on TNT. It's got to be feeling big for you right now. You see, Tony, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I had a world of words for you, but I just don't. I wanted to be a pro wrestler since I was three years old. It's a lifelong thing for me. I never wanted anything else. There was no school, no college. I, I just knew wrestling, and I knew I was going to make it regardless. It was what I was always going to go after. It's so funny. I remember the pandemic first hit, and here I am, the first week I'm eating pizza, I'm eating chicken wings. I'm not gonna wrestle for a while in my head. And then next thing you know, I get a call from AEW. They asked me to come down and do some work and it's been history from there. After I got the big first win, you get the Lee Johnson is all elite. My trainers, Cody, Dustin, Arn, and hell, even Brandy, they showed me but if you do the work, then it always pays off. The Rose family is my family. Being in the Nightmare family is great, but it comes with a lot of pressure. My last name is not Rhodes. My last name is Johnson. The Rhodes name has a lot of legacy, a lot to live up to. But through their guidance, they told me it's okay to just be Lee Johnson. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna blaze my own trail. I originally called myself the Shotgun. I got that name because I had an uncle. He played football. He passed away in 2009, and when he played football, he called himself the Shotgun. And I got here, and I needed something else. I came up with Big Shotty, and that's a mindset. Every time I'm inside of that ring and I'm Big Shotty, it's a completely different man. I am the passion. I am the fire. I am the drive. I am big shot. I've done the work. I'm only going to continue to do the work. I live by this quote. I did yesterday what they wouldn't so that today I can do what they can't. I'm not throwing this one away. This is my shot. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Ty Conti. Along with negative one of the Dark Order. Here is Ty Conti, one of the great athletes in the women's division. 
so many skills Ty Conti has. Yeah, she's really the total package, you know? Yeah. The way she's interacting with negative one, she shows the sweetheart side, she's very beautiful. Same time, she's a tremendous competitor with a lot of tricks up her sleeve. Black belt in judo, other accolades. Here's Justin. And her opponent from the Ocean State, Ashley Vox. Ashley Vox will be her opponent. Six years experience. Had her debut in early January to Thunder Rosa. She's 0-1. A Ty Conte, black belt in judo, blue belt in Brazilian jiu jitsu, an accomplished freestyle amateur wrestler. That's pretty much. That's a pretty good resume. Yeah. And was also a finalist in the Olympic trials to make the Brazilian team in judo. And how about that? Olympic athlete. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then negative one staying out there with her. Making sure we know it was only one count that time. What a great motivator, negative one. Yeah, for all of us. Yeah, for all of us. No doubt. Vox primarily a tag team wrestler. In this singles competition, look at that a version of a cross arm breaker in many ways. Definitely innovative. Vox tried a. Wow. Short right hand that time, one. Oh, she's got the arm trapped now. Right. Oh, this is this is extremely excruciating on the shoulder. Good roll up getting out of a box that time. There's where the judo comes into play with those throws. That's just ripping that shoulder right out of the socket. We talked about Vox being a tag team specialist. She's two plus years as a shimmer tag team champion, as a matter of fact. We're told. Did she, about the, did she just pull on her cheek? I believe so. I believe she ripped on the side of her cheek. Wow, she tried to zip her. That's what the old timers call it, zippering somebody in the cheek. Hook him in the cheek, zipper. Zipper in the cheek. That's it. Here nice comes. Shoulder to the stomach. Comes box up. Right head. Well, negative one fell down on that one. I idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he, he took a tumble. He took a tumble that time with uh, Ty Conti. Yeah, he's into it, man. Yes, he is. Conti. Wow. Oh, wow. Him. How about that? Yeah. Conti threw the rope. She's going to go down on the floor against Ashley Vox here. Here she goes. Oh, missed. Wow. If that would have connected, there would have wow. been teeth in the crowd. Yeah, I believe so. But she caught her on the other side with a kick right between the shoulder blades. I'd take shoulder blades over the teeth any day. Yeah, I agree with you, Paul. Oh, to the apron, hard apron that time. That's a good kidney shot that'll take your breath right out of you. Two big shots, forearm shots, make it three to the face, to the jaw, and Ty Conte comes right back with her own shots, and those have some muscle behind them. Conte, hands on her knees, as you can see, trying to regroup here. Well, those kidney shots will take the breath right out of you. You're not kidding, and also back up against the well, Vox rolled right through. Here she comes again. Oh, and a running knee strike that time in the face. And Ty Conti, well, is in trouble as negative one looks on. Ty needs to get back in the ring, create some separation, get out of this environment right here. Hasn't turned out that well for her. Into a spinning nice. backbreaker that time. Uh, she's got her, now Ty Conti with a different demeanor altogether and then what she walked in with, with negative one. Yeah, she was on smile. She's definitely a judo competitor now. Yeah, she is. She is serious. She is serious and focused here. She's up top. Vox ducked underneath. Ty Conte, boom! That pump kick was in there. That was in there. She's almost daring her to come in again. This time, it's a running knee into the corner. And she's got her hook. Boom, there it goes again. And there it is. One, two, three. Very her, impressive. Her move is called the Ty KO, but I don't think that was it. The winner of this match, Ty Conti. Well, you never know. I mean, she did KO her opponent. She did. It's a hammerlock DDT from Ty Conti that gets the win here, Paul. Here it is again. Yeah, that, that's definitely KO right there. Yes, sir. Got her down. Well, I want to note here, look at the gentleman that negative one was. 
where we help tie up. I love it. <laughs> he, wants, he wants to raise the hand. That's it. Of Ty Conti. Chivalry's not dead, it's just sick. Coming up next on AEW Elevation, tag team action, brother combination. We'll see Matt and Mike Seidel coming up here on Elevation. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 335 pounds, Matt and Mike Seidel. Veteran brother combination, been very successful since joining forces here in AEW. An abundance of confidence and these two kids can really get around the ring. And their opponents set a combined weight of 435 pounds, a team of Jarrell Nelson and Royce Isaacs. Yo, Jarrell and Royce, they, they call themselves the West Coast Wrecking Crew. Yes. You know, best friends out of the ring. They say their chemistry carries over. We'll find out against two brothers. So here we go in our next matchup here on Dark Elevation. Veteran referee Rick Knox starting things. They want to do some, uh, well, Isaac's in there running his mouth, and I'm telling you, <laughs> Mike Seidel is more than willing to mix it up a little yeah, bit. And, and that's what you got to do. Yeah. Nice focus in his chi there. He's ready. Oh, nice. Amateur wrestling leg takedown. I dig it. Both Mike and Matt have wrestled extensively in Japan with Dragon Gate. So they are well seasoned all over the world. And not only that, here they are in AEW where the Young Bucks are the champs, where the Young Bucks will have to contend with Ray Phoenix and Pac. You got to contend not only that, with, but with SCU, Top Flight, some of the great tag teams here in AEW. And how about FTR now aligning themselves? Here's a cover one. Aligning themselves with MJF, and Sean Spears, and Wardlow with Tully Blanchard. You talked about a group that's going to be the dominating. Wow. That happened just this past Wednesday on AEW Dynamite live on TNT. Look at this. Yeah, I love what Matt's doing here. With a really attacking that lower back. You know, trying to take his strength away from doing the amateur moves. Attack that lower back, attack that lower back, and then it'll take away his ability to attack, you know, Seidel with the amateur wrestling moves. Yeah, you know, you know, Matt's known as one of the great high flyers of all time, but he was very, very happy just to keep it grounded there. And now here comes Jarrell Nelson. Well, I'm sure Matt's learned too also there's a time and a place for that. Right. No okay, the there it is. That was the right time in the right place. Just a great deep arm drag by Seidel. That's Matt in the ring. Very Ricky Steamboat-ish. How about that? There's a name from the past, too. <laughs> Man, we got them all, don't we? Yeah. Well, that's actually one of the guys that I don't think I've ever wrestled. So. You never wrestled Steamboat? I don't think so. Wow. How about that? Yeah. But very few. Seems like I've been fortunate to wrestle everybody. Double right. stop that time by Mike Seidel coming off. Like the nice teamwork, tagging in out, crisp and clean. Get a double move in for that five second count. Wow. Deep snap, man. Wow. Standing moonsault that time. They need to cut that corner off, cut that ring in half, get them, get their opponent, get the side L's, and you get their opponent back to the corner. That's Neutral corner is fine, but keep it away from the opponent's corner. It seemed like Mike that time was almost letting Nelson reach for the tag and yeah. then pulled him back. Yeah, that's a risky move sometimes. You know, in the tag teams I've been a part of in the past, you always want to cut the ring in half. Sure. Keep him away from tagging him, wear him down, wear him down, pin him and get paid. Cover nice by Mike. save. Yeah, a good save that time. Uh, Isaacs, and now. Well, you look. jump on one brother, you know the other brother's going to come in and fight, too. Yeah, Matt oh! having to be admonished. And then Royce Isaacs came running in. Took advantage of that. Driving right back to his own corner. Smart. 
change the momentum right there. You got to keep your head on a swivel in those situations. You get hit from behind, it's all over. Yeah, these kids, Nelson Isaac, they're they're powerful young kids here, man. They. I'm liking what I see. So I'm far liking what I see too, man. Seems like a good, solid amateur background. Good teamwork. Double gut stomp. Kids from out on the West Coast, one coming all the way here to Jacksonville, Florida, home of AEW, to make a name for themselves. And they have a chance here against the side. They, they certainly are bigger than the side elves as far as weight is concerned. But let's see if the the experience of the side elves come through. Isaacs, he'll hook up. Wow, Mike's in trouble. One, two. Boy, Matt was trying to get in the ring. He couldn't, but Mike kicked out anyway. Good for Mike. That was a close one right there. That was that was really close. Sidell's almost got pinned. Well, they're not backing down at all. Nice matrix move with a duck. And here comes Matt Sidell in. Matt Sidell's going to be a ball of fire now. He knows what's on the line. Back leg front kicks. Nice ring awareness. Smith. Knew that Royce was trying to sneak in for a cheap shot. Man, it's just lightning quick. Such an athlete. Oh, plus Matt has 1,200 plus career matches. 1,200. How about that, man? It's pretty Whoa. good. Wow. That's impressive. Standing moonsault with a twist. One, two, and a two count. The agility it takes to be able to do a standing moonsault, much less to add the twist. To add the twist. It's is. amazing. Uh, that's that's showing off. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah well, and that is showing off. Yeah, yeah. That's showing what you can do. Double team Matt caught him, and a pickup, and sends now. Isaac's on the outside. Nice, Hurricane Rana. Hurricane Rana from the middle of the ring and nice. in the back of the head. Nice kick. Here it comes. They double lightning spiral. It's over. The brothers pull it off. Great job for Seidel. The winners of this match, Matt and Mike Seidel. Really a great win, that lightning spiral. The double lightning spiral, if you will. And another win for the Seidel's. They go to two and three here in AEW. And they were pushed a little bit here by Nelson and Isaacs. You can yeah. tell you that. Yeah, Nelson and Isaacs had a really good showing. I mean, to come all the way from California, you don't know if the jet lag had anything to do with it. But uh, they definitely uh, made a statement tonight, I thought. With that standing moonsault ball you talked about. Yeah, it's just showing off. Yeah. <laughs> and then the double lightning spiral. And there are your winners. The Seidel brothers. All right, let's go uh, backstage once again. Alex Marvez standing by with Will Hobbs and Hook. Team Taz is represented on the debut episode of AEW Elevation. I'm here with Hook and powerhouse Hobbs. And Hobbs, tonight you have a match against a man who has won nine of his past 11 matches <laughs> in one Brandon Cutler. Your thoughts? This is that bullshit, Alex. This is that same bullshit that we've been talking about. You think Cutler's gonna get his 10th win over me? Do you? Do I look like a chump? Do I look like some type of buster? Do I look like someone who walks around AEW playing games? I don't play games, Alex. Tonight, I'm all about that action. Tonight, we handle town business. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Long Island, New York, Danny Jordan. Well, here she is, the real mean girl herself. You know what's in that book there, Paul? What's that, Tony? That's the burn book. The burn book, the real mean girl burn book. That's right. She puts you in that book, you're going to get burnt. <laughs> I've known Danny for a number of years. She's, there's the burn, the burn book. She is, uh, so are you in the burn book? Uh, not yet. Okay. However, 
She was trained at Georgia Wrestling School by A.R. Fox in 2016. And she has really gone through a gauntlet of top contenders here. And she's got another one. She's got her hands full here with Red Velvet. And her opponent, straight out of your mama's kitchen, Red Velvet. Red Velvet at 5'2 is Spitfire. And she's got a boxing and MMA background since she was 12. How about that? She started out 0-9 in AEW and has rebounded to be 11-3 after that 0-9 start. That just tells you a lot of how she's improved. And here's the bell. Here we go. Mike Posey, the referee, and... Well, you know, she got her start on dark, and she had a chance to figure out who she was as a talent, and she made some changes, and it's obviously working for her. Nice collar and elbow lockup. I like to see that, feeling each other out. Both in the very formative years of their career. Red Velvet, only four years experience. Danny Jordan, three years experience. Danny originally from Long Island. And look at her doing some trash talking already. Oh, she's the mean girl. She's got to talk to That's her. right. Nice headlock takeover. Red Velvet just content with Matt wrestling Danny Jordan here. Nice counter with the leg scissor. That was good. Yeah, Danny got strong legs. That leg scissor. Those can be very, very good weapons for her. Right. There it is again. There it is again. Clamps down on it. And look at uh, Red Velvet get out again with her quickness. Deep nice arm, drag. arm drag. That's there. That hurt the small of the back. Takes her down once again. She's got Danny Jordan reeling here now. Nice split. splits. Wow. Wow. I could do that once. <laughs> once. That <laughs> once was it. and never again. Never I have, move. I have a feeling Red Velvet's done it many, many times. Fantastic athlete. With that MMA background, I'm sure she's had to train to get those kicks in. Red Velvet and Brandy Rhodes formed a friendship last summer, leading to her recent affiliation with Cody in that subsequent tag team match against Jade Cargill and Shaquille O'Neal earlier this month on Dynamite. What an incredible bout that was. That was tremendous. That, uh, you know, and, and of course, we weren't sure how how Shaq would do. He was tremendous in the match. Really weren't sure how Jade and Red Velvet would do because of their, you know, limited number of years in the ring. But they both performed and proved to us that both are going to be stars in AEW for quite a while. Absolutely. I was really impressed with, with their efforts. The, the entire efforts all the way around from Shaquille, Jade, yep. Red Velvet. Um, Cody everybody got, yep. complimented everybody. You know, Cody was a general out there, obviously. And uh, it was really a, an enjoyable match to watch. Plus that big bump from Shaq. Oh. I don't think anybody saw that coming. Well, well yeah. she went to her book. I don't know if I'd have gone to my book when I got an opponent like Red Velvet in the ring on the cell. Good. Roll up that time. He got a two count. Almost cost her. Yeah, almost cost her. Don't go to the book there, Danny. At least not yet. Good. Look at that blocking at that time. Nicely done by Red nice Velvet. Nice counter. Look at this. Broke the hold that time. And it, was that a hair? I that think was, that was a hair pull. I, I think believe she went for an arm and took what she could get and used the hair. Well, if you're a mean girl, you're going to use the hair time to time, I would think. Absolutely, you're going to pull the hair. Right. And you're going to have a big smile all about it. Look at her just trash talking her way. Steady, steady. I don't know. If she. I don't know if she's trying to get her opponent fired up. She did a pretty good job that time. Velvet takes her did. down. she did. She lit a fire under Red Velvet. She's got Velvet hooked. Velvet, though, counters. And the real mean girl is in trouble. Standing moonsault that time by Velvet. One, two, and a kick out. It's really amazing how athletic some of this AEW talent is. You know, that's one of the things I've noticed being here with the different athletic moves. It's so different than when I started. Nice spinning back hit. Danny Jordan is in the best shape of her life right now, and I can tell you that from watching her matches. Well, here's a cover. One, two, three. There it is. The winner of this match, Red Velvet. I believe Red Velvet just uh, gave her just desserts. Yes, she did. That's what she calls it. You know, all this talking about dessert, I'm hungry. <laughs> you know?
I don't know if he knows about me, Tony, but I've never passed up dessert. I could tell that. <laughs> the winner is Red Velvet with just desserts over the real mean girl, Danny Jordan. Matt and Mike Seidel, a big win tonight here on AEW Dark Elevation. What is next in your tag team future? That's right, the Seidel brothers. Ben, we do not break. We're going to be taking over every tag team on Elevation. Hey, Omar, hey Alex. Thanks. Out! Maybe. You're done! You stay away. <laughs> Look, I was, I was kind of listening into what you guys were saying. It sounded... It, it, it was giving me goosebumps. Look at this. Check it out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so here's the thing. Um, as much as people want to listen to you talk, they would probably rather hear from the champion. And that's why I'm here to give you guys word that AEW's heavyweight champion of the world, Kenny Omega, is here to scout for our flagship promotion, our flagship show on Wednesday nights, Dynamite. And if you guys stay on the winning track, who knows? Maybe you'll be on Dynamite and maybe you'll even step in the ring with the champion. Dude, I'm the perfect guy to step in the ring with the champion. I'll break through that top five and I'll be a challenger Whoa, in no time. Top, top, top five? Who's, yeah. who's top five are we talking about? Yeah. You're talking breaking. about that cockamamie Tony Khan win-loss record top five? Look, there's only one top five that counts around here. Okay. Now, Sean. Hey, Sean. Read it. Go ahead, read it. Read it to the people. From the desk of Kenny Omega. Yeah. Number five, Michael Nakazawa. That's Number four, Michael Nakazawa. That's this guy. Number three, yep. two, one. Yes. All Michael Nakazawa. I mean, come on. I already beat Nakazawa. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You beat Michael Nakazawa, Matt Seidel. I'll give you a shot at wrestling me. And if you beat me, maybe I'll even give you a shot at the gold. Sound good to you? Yeah, all okay. I have to do here's is a, beat Nakazawa. One, yeah, there's one, caveat. On. there's one caveat. There's one caveat. There's one caveat. You what got it? Gift. You got it? You ready? You got to do it right now. Ooh. It's it's now or never. It's either now, it's now or never. You gonna take the bet? Let's do this. I'm, I'm all right. Let's go. Back to back. Let's go. All right, get him, neck. Yeah. 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 Right. Get him yeah. neck. Okay, get him come neck. on, come on, get him neck. Get him neck. Get him neck. Next on AEW Dark Elevation, we will see a singles match between two great tag team wrestlers. Dante Martin of Top Flight will take on Max Caster of the Acclaim. This bout is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Weighing 195 pounds, Dante Martin. You are looking at one half of Top Flight, and you are also looking at the youngest full-time wrestler in AEW. Dante Martin just turned 20 earlier this month. Love the energy. 20 years old. Really, really good for him. The acclaimed top of the chain, so I bet you know the name. Yo, and all the fans listen, listen in the game, and we in our yeah. own lane. Everybody yeah. saying that they want to be a platinum max. I be doing the most. How the team top flight when you sit in and coach. How I'ma be scared of a four year old. I'ma put you through the wall like a glory hole. I'm what you call nice footsteps bigger than Paul White. My peer group smaller than your balls, right? <laughs> I'm about to take down Dante and I'm more handsome. At least that's what your mom say. Your mom told me that, Dante. Mm. How do you feel about that? Wow. Don't talk about your mom. Yeah, that's, that's a little uncalled for to talk about his mom. Well, there you go. That's what uh, Platinum Max Caster is all about. That's psychological warfare to start the match. Huh? Get in your yeah. head and hope you make a mistake. Max, one of the uh, six that competed in the Face of the Revolution ladder match at Revolution. Won, of course, by Scorpio Sky at that great match just this past week on Dynamite on TNT. But now Max Caster, one half of the acclaim against Top Flight's Dante Martin, who he and his brother Darius had risen all the way up into the top five before Darius suffered an injury. So now we see that Max Caster and Dante Martin will go out of here in singles competition, two of the Young stars of two of the great young tag teams here in AEW. And the fact is that there's no question that Platinum Max Caster 
has quite the surly attitude. I don't know if his father, who's Pro Bowl tight end Rich Caster, a Super Bowl winner as well, agrees with all that or not. But wow, uh, a little aggressive there. Yeah. You know, this is getting personal really quick. Not that it wasn't a start at the beginning with a shot at his mom, but, you know, you start bringing family into it. By the way, this is the first career match against Dante. This is their first matchup, and they're already this hot at each right. other? Yeah, that's right. Well, just because you had, just because you haven't faced him doesn't mean you don't know him, right? Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. You know, people have always asked me, you know, do I like some of the people I work with? I'm like, do you like everybody you work with? And my, my answer is yes. <laughs> Even Taz. <laughs> yeah, what That's about Taz? I'm, I'm like the only one. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at that. Look, look at the quickness here yeah. of Dante. Sending Max in. Caster. Good little showing off there and also luring him in to kick him down. A little bait and switch. I like it. Yeah, this is it. You know, we talk so much about what elevation is all about. This is what elevation's all about. Two kids who have been great in tag team wrestling now mixing up in singles competition for the first time ever. Let's see who comes out ahead. I like this. You know, as young as both these guys are, you have no idea what kind of feuds these guys are going to have in the future or how long they're going to be together competing against each other. Uh, this is really great to see this in the beginning. Dante trained by Molly Holly and Ken Anderson in Minneapolis. That's a pretty reputable group to be trained by, I tell yes. you. Yes, it is. Try to look Mo at Molly Holly very well. Good block on the uh, deep arm drag. Yeah. Very rarely do you see that deep arm drag get blocked. There was like a wrist drag there. It worked. It sure did. Now watch out. This is where Dante excels. Try the top rope plancha that time. You're right. As Max walked out of the way, and Max moved out of the way that time, Dante just. Ah, I like it. No wasted motion at all that time. No. Nope. Took his feet right out from underneath them in the air. And Platinum Max, who, by the way, his raps are pretty cool. They used your name in it. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, I appreciate yeah. the shout out. You know, um, he's, he's had some. He's innovative. I've he heard has, his raps before. He's creative. Look at this. Grabs. Trying to block that high fly maneuver. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. Grab the leg on the. Oh my oh, God! Nice. Face first to the top turnbuckle. Yeah, I knew that was going to end poorly. Wow. Hey, hey. Top game changer right there, and Max Caster just wailing away. Yeah. You know, Dante Martin was Dante Martin was living on that high rope, and I knew something bad was going to happen when he got caught. That's the thing about gravity. Sooner or later, it always wins. Yeah, but Dante calls himself gravity's only exception. <laughs> so, <laughs> I gotta, do, I gotta agree to disagree with that. <laughs> okay. One. Well, I appreciate his athleticism <laughs> and his confidence, but it's catchy. Yeah, it's catchy. Yeah, it but is. Gravity does win. Uh, absolutely. To the full arm drag and twist now. Top wrist lock here. Max going. Oh, oh wow. wow. How about that? A variation wow, of that. Wow, that's a good way to snap the tricep right off the bone. Two and a two count that time. I'm not sure Max even wanted to try to cover him that time. Yeah. I think he wants to. Look at this. Driving the elbow, point of the elbow, and the side of the face just wrenching the neck. Yeah, and that shoulder right now is not doing well. If you notice on the kick out earlier, the left arm wasn't involved in the kick out. So he's feeling that injury. Good shot to the midsection. Nice reef on that arm. See, believe it or not, I like what Max is doing here. He's singled out a body part, and he's going after it. He's had some success with that shoulder, and he was staying on it. Now he's going to an ear. And got him back in the corner. Castro hoists him up using the shoulder. Very precarious position here for Dante. Oh, Dante, look at the marks on his shoulder. You talked about that shoulder, Paul. Yeah. Boy, that has seemed some. Well, I look at the red mark. I yeah. noticed it on the kick out that right. he didn't use that shoulder, and that's that's usually an indication that something's not working right. Now these young guys use so many high wrist maneuvers and put their bodies at at, at wrist. Oh, so many times. Ooh, that's well, going to change a lot of things. Yeah, Dante Martin might want to be careful at 20. He may want to have a family someday. Yeah, absolutely, man. Because that. Uh, yeah, that, that, no. Yeah, that steel turnbuckle is covered, I know, oh, but wow. man. That was just face first right into the mat. Yeah, I don't think Dante, I don't think Dante Martin knows where he is right now. Oh, here's a cover, a roll by Caster, and again, 
Not much of a cover at all. But now he goes. Now he hooks the leg and tried to break down the leg in the arm. With that left look, arm. You look at the, that. Look at the knee on the side of the face that time. Caster really knows how to dish out the punishment. Yeah, he's on it and he's focused. Those cross forearms in the face. He's right back on that shoulder again. Oh, yeah. He's trying to counter it by holding on to his. He needs to break that grip if he wants to sink that in. Yeah, we'll try the cross arm breaker and look at that. Turning Dante in. Dante rolled him up. And got a two count that time. It's a good way Cole to Turner. get a guy to let go of a hold. Try Abs to pin him with it. Absolutely it is. Great counter by Dante, who's finding some good counter moves out of this offense here by Caster. Caster snap mares him down and tried a running knee and missed. Right now, Dante's trying to stay alive and keep moving. Really impressed with this young man, the fight in him and his, his counter ability and his forethought. It's pretty, pretty impressive. That was a, just a great extension of a standing lariat and a drop kick to it send him down. He keeps landing on that left arm, though. Yep. He's feeling it every time. There he is. Right there again. He's feeling it. He's got a little momentum change. The adrenaline's pumping. You see right at the point of that shoulder, that mark, that's been the focus of what Caster's been doing. Here comes Dante now. Well, he, was gonna, he was going to. Oh, he was going to hit the other side. He took his eye off his mark. I wasn't sure what what, what uh, you know Dante was trying to achieve there. And Max took full advantage of it. He's going to try something over the top. Oh my goodness! Wow. High risk, high reward. How's that shoulder? Wow, Tope Suicida. <laughs> Very good. Tony. Thank well. I've, Have you done this before? I've learned from the best. Up on top, here, Dante still hurt. And springboard and a big cross body. Hooks a far leg and he gets a two. Yeah, that left arm right now is giving Dante a lot of trouble. He's holding it close to his body. But he's got Castor reeling here, Paul. And that's what he wants. He's got to. Got to take that momentum and keep it going. And now he's got the boom box. The boom box, which has been so effective for the acclaimed and for Castor. Oh, oh wow. Lord. That's just uncalled for. That is, uh, you know, that's kind of two shots tonight in that area for Dante Martin. Yeah. This is not to be, a, you know, good night for him. He's definitely going to be hitting the trainer up for a bag of ice later. There it is, the mic drop. Two bags, one for the shoulder and and one there for it is. somewhere else. Somewhere else. The winner of this match. Platinum Max Caster with the mic drop. Tell you what, he just had some punishment, but Dante kept coming back and coming back, and in the end, the cheap shot and the mic drop changed everything. We know the old saying: if you don't cheat, you're not trying hard enough. Of course, when I was doing it, I never called it cheating. I called it improvising to win. Here it is once again. Nice. A mic drop, bang. He knows the point of that elbow went right on that left shoulder, too. Yes, it did. Took the full force of that impact. Honestly, I think the kick before the elbow is what did it. Stay with us. Coming up next here on AEW Dark Elevation, we are going to see Abaddon in singles competition. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the Black Hills. Abaddon! Well, this will give you nightmares. It certainly does, Tony. Holy smoke. You know, I'm not a big fan of clowns or scary movies and definitely not zombies. So uh, I would definitely give Abaddon all the room she wanted. You don't like zombies? No, I'm yeah. not a big fan of okay. it. No, no. Well, I'm Abaddon. a big fan of clowns either. I got kicked out of a McDonald's at six for beating up Ronald McDonald. <laughs> I was a hundred pound six year old, but I bet you were. And her opponent from Indio, California, Ray Lynn. Yeah, see, Ray doesn't even know what to think of Abaddon. Look, Abaddon gets that shriek of hers, that scream, and here we go. Well, regardless of how uh, she looks and her demeanor, which is a lot of it is obviously to intimidate, and it it works. It by works. The way. Yeah. The, the the fact is is that she is very very effective in the ring. Oh boy. 
Whoa, man. How about that? Just like a shriek and a scream before she hits you. You know what's coming. Nothing you can do about it, Nothing right? Nothing you can do about it. Oh, she's just stalking her now. You know, the funny thing, Tony, the only two losses that Abaddon's have has had in AEW is to the Women's World Champion. Yes, exactly. That's pretty impressive. Well, so that broke. by theory is she's world champion caliber. Abaddon broke into the wrestling scene in the Independence in Denver. And uh, she's made quite a name for herself here. I just. Oh, showing her strength and her power. I like that. That's a move that I've used myself before. Mm -hmm. And look at this, just, I mean, you, you look up and you see her looking over you like that, and you think, my God, what's she going to do now? Oh, there you go. Ray Lynn, seven years experience, trying to get some offense going here. Nice. Almost like a perfect flex. Ray Lynn's a former women's champion, Ohio Valley Wrestling, OVW. Oh, wow, OVW, that's, uh, wow. that's out there with Al Snow, that's right? That's our buddy Al Snow, absolutely. Yeah. And, a lot of fun with Al Snow. Oh, she's got her picked up. Oh, boy. Slammed her down hard. It seems like that kick to the head by Ray Lynn just kind of, I don't know, got it going for Abaddon here. And now, as Aubrey Edwards admonishing Abaddon, try to get back in the ring, Abaddon just laying into her. You can tell I'm a little bit afraid, right, Tony? Yeah, I can tell you're a lot afraid. Yeah, I'm not saying that. And you're, much. And like, you're I'm, a, I'm really afraid of Abaddon. You're, you're like the biggest guy this sport's ever known, and, and you're afraid of that. Uh, Abaddon <laughs> scares the bejesus out of me. I'm okay. telling you. Here it is again. Pick up from this angle. Oh, my yeah, God. That, that, was, that was with authority. Yeah, that was back of the head hit first. Yeah, yeah that's, that's frightening. Oh, look at she. She is all in race. She, and not only that, she was admonished by Aubrey Edwards and Aubrey ran to a neutral corner when Abaddon turned on her. I, I would run too. I'm afraid. Yeah. If she come running at me, I'd throw her my wallet I, I, and try to run the other way. Yeah. Paul, if I ever caught your wallet, I'd give it back to you, I promise. <laughs> and look Actually. at this. Boy, it has her up in almost a version of a torture rack. Ooh! Well, that is a cemetery drive. Yes, it is. And there's no way out of the cemetery. Impressive and scary as hell. Abaddon is not done. No winner of this match. Abaddon. And I guess you can say survivor of this match is uh, Ray Lynn. At least we think she has survived. We think she has. And that is the most bizarre. That, that's going to give me nightmares. That's I'm a, disturbed. That's a creepy look. Paul, you want to take a look at the cemetery drive again? Great finish. Great name for it, too. I mean, that just really knocks him out cold. Abaddon doesn't even have to hook the leg up, so that's done. Abaddon gets another win. She is now 10 and 2 and 4 1 here in. 2021 and scared one giant. Our next matchup here on AEW Dark Elevation, Will Hobbs of Team Taz with Hook in his corner will take on Brandon Cutler. Stay with us. We need some will power. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by Hook from East Palo Alto, California. Weight 270 pounds. Power House Hops. Boy, aptly named. Both of them aptly named. Power House and Hook. One will stretch you, one will hook you. No doubt. Either way, you're not having a good day. Uh, we saw during the how. They got involved and how instrumental they were in Team Taz kind of getting the upper hand for a moment during that street fight that we saw in Revolution recently. All 
I really love Brandon Cutler. And his opponent from Rancho Cucamonga, California, weighing 192 pounds, Brandon Cutler. Brandon is is two and two here in in 2021, but in his last 11 singles matches, he has won nine of them. Childhood friend, well documented of Matt and Nick Jackson, and he returned to wrestling after a seven year absence. Got a real intimidating focused look. I'm looking forward to calling this matchup. Really a, a contrast in styles here. And we talk about Will Hobbs so big and so powerful. Brandon, big guy as well. I mean, he stands 6'2 and 192. Yeah, but also Brandon is very, very athletic. And that's going to be an interesting matchup to see with Hobbs. Because Hobbs is also an athlete, but I got to give a little bit of an edge to Hobbs with the power. So Brandon needs to stick and move here, and Hobbs trying to get him caught into a corner here to, to begin things. Hobbs trying to be intimidating, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's, try, he's telling him, he's saying, come on, try it again. You know, before, before Butch Reed passed away, he had a lot of good things to say about Hobbs. Sure. You know? Well, when you get that kind of endorsement from somebody like Butch Reed, you know, that's a, that's, that's a good starter. Yeah, unfortunately, Butch passed away just recently, and Butch was one of, was a major star across the United States before before really national TV back in the territory days. Great veteran and look at Brandon Cutler go. Yeah, he's smart. He's staying on Hobbs. Yeah. Hobbs is trying to get his get his head, head cleared right now. Yeah. You know, Cutler's been on him, on him, relentless, relentless. Yeah. Oh, and there's the power. Yeah, and there's the mistake. Brandon should have stayed on him, I think. You want to try to coach him up here, but he he hit the ropes. He allowed Hobbs to shake out the cobwebs very, very quickly, and then mount this little comeback here. Look at intimidating the referee as well, screaming, "I've got him, Knox!" This is all Taz is doing. Intimidation, yeah. right? Oh, intimidation ring. You intimidate the referee. Sure. The referee's le less likely to call you on something because right. they're intimidated by you. Yep. You know. And this is Hobbs going to his definitely his strength right here. Squeezing that bear hug. Squeezing that bear hug. Make it hard to get a breath. Wear the guy down. Hey, okay, there have been a number of factions in AEW. We talked about just recently the, the new one that's developed with FTR, Sean Spears, Wardlow, and Tully Blanchard, of course, MJF. But I really think Team Taz has maybe as fine a group of athletes as anyone. Great job that time by Cutler to Smart. drop kick the knee, get the big man off. How many people tried to drop kick your knee in the day, right? <laughs> That's why my knees are held together with bubble gum and paper clips <laughs> and a few prayers. Great job by Cutler in the cover. Wow, oh, I got a big up. kick out. Wow. Back to the back, back to work again goes Brandy Cutler here, trying to face him up. Brandon Cutler's been really impressive. Oh, a little bit too long to set things up on that one. Brandon Cutler got abrasions on the back of his, on his back. You can see it right there. Hobbs had him. Hobbs. Oh, there it is. That's what you call town business. We need some will power. No winner of this match. Powerhouse Hobbs. I thought Brandon Cutler really brought it to Powerhouse Hobbs. I thought he did too, man. He, he tried to stay away from him, but you can see on the back the abrasions, and there you see Hook in the ring. He wanted to give him fist bump. And since Will Hobbs has gotten together with Taz. No one has been able to stop him in AEW. He doesn't even want the referee to touch him. There you go, fist bump. That's part, of that, that's part of that Taz coaching, that meanness. That comes out in the talent. Big win for Powerhouse Hobbs of Team Taz. We didn't even really get to touch on you and Sean Spears. How's your back? It's a little bit sore. Oh my God. <laughs> What's up? I want to talk about wrestling with the week. Whatever we have interest in, we're going to chop it up. Did you get the PS5? Uh, 
I'm over here all weekend playing PS4 like a heathen. <laughs> Scorpio Sky and myself, James Willems. We got distracted. We're going to be talking about video games. We're going to be talking about pop culture. Have you seen the New York Subway Rat Man? What? <laughs> We're going to be recapping AEW. It's the most exciting part of the show. We're basically going to be talking about the week. We got a lot to get into, man. It's also what the people want to see. <laughs> oh my God. Voila. This is progress. Scorpio Sky, James Willems, Wrestling with the Week. Wrestling with the Week. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe now. Woo. It's beautiful. I love it. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the 305, Diamante. So you see, Diamante has around her neck that medal that she won when she and Eva Lise won the first ever women's tag team tournament in AEW. And her opponent from Queens, New York, Layla Gray. Layla Gray, only five months experience in a pro wrestling uh, compared to 12 years that Diamante's had. Yeah, Diamante's trying to secure her first top five ranking in the singles division, too. She's successful in tags, but now she's trying to secure her singles division. That's pretty cool. I love how aggressive Diamante is. I mean, she just see, she starts right out going right after you. Yeah, that's the experience coming in. Tony. Sure. No uh, showboat, no playing around. Get to the work and get it done. You know, float over that front face lock, choke the wind off. I'm always a big fan of that with opponents. Anytime you can keep them from breathing, you can keep them from doing anything. I also would like the fact that she had to spend eight months on the sideline with a torn ACL. And she made her way back from that. Anytime you come back from an injury like that, that shows me a lot of character. Yeah, a lot of character, a lot of determination. Sure. Agree. Yeah. That's the biggest thing when you're a pro athlete like this in this kind of competition. You have a big injury and being able to get the confidence to come back from that injury and be successful. Nice Layla, arm drag. Yeah, Layla Gray with a nice arm drag. And Five months of experience, she learned how to do that deep arm drag. Layla Gray trained by David Heath, also known as Gangrel, and longtime South Florida wrestler Soul Man Alex G. <laughs> I know both those guys very well. Native of Queens, New York, as we said, only her second match here in AEW. And boy, she can make quite a name for herself here against Diamante. Definitely working that hammer lock. Got to watch the back elbow, though. Whoa! Oh, not the left clothesline. That left hand Larry, it's always a surprise. That's a great counter that time. You, the right elbow, right? She ducks, right, you hit, and you spin around and hit her with your left. Yeah. Great, great counter that time. Great job, Diamante. There, so, that, there you go. There's the Diamante has man. She did. She only back down from Mike Posey here. Um, she's a 12 year veteran. She understands what it takes to win. Nice <laughs> cross face wow. forearm. Wow. wow. Man. Yeah, that's going to knock the fillings out of her teeth. Yes, yes, it is. Here's a cover. One, two. I like the aggressive cover, hook the leg. See a lot of, lot of younger, a uh, lot of, young, lot of younger talents make the mistake and not hook the leg. Sure. Too busy showboating. You always want to make the best, best attempt to win that you can and hook the leg. Going for the trifecta here, maybe trifecta. three. Trifecta. No, no. Oh yeah, the oh. last one right up against the turnbuckles. Talk about it. I talked about it, her blowing out her knee. You can blow out a knee hitting the turnbuckles like that. And here she comes in. That was right in the bread basket. That was there. There's a shotgun running drop kick, if you will. And here's a cover. Hooks the far leg and new. And got a two count. And right Layla. settle things down, work that arm. Good time you can keep your opponent in pain or off balance. Or even from committing an offense against you, that's a good strategy. Notice how she lets her pull up and then she just yanks back on the chin again. Yeah. Putting more torque on it, pulling back, hooking that arm underneath hers, and then pulling on the chin. Rear chin lock, if you will. Yeah, that kind of stuff wears you down. Starts getting your head heavy to hold up. Well, 
Well, she missed that time. Oh, boy, she did not. She didn't miss with that no, one. sir. She got uh, some extra spring off that bottom turnbuckle, and that knocked Diamante right flat on her back that time. I wonder if that was a little faint to trip Diamante up to, to land that back elbow. Well, it worked, I tell you. And now big forearm shot, and they exchange it forearms. Oh, to the midsection. And now a European uppercut. uppercut. Yes, sir, out of that. Spin kick that time. Diamante up on top. Whoa. Code red. Code red. One, two, three. Diamante wins. The winner of this match, Diamante. Diamante now has won six of her last eight matches and goes to 17 and eight all time in AEW. She's going to be a force, man. Continue to be a force here in all elite wrestling. Here it is again, Paul. Yep. Code red time, buddy. Love that code red. That just really puts a button on the end of anything. There's no real getting up from that. Nice execution. Diamante is your winner here on AEW Dark Elevation. Coming up next for the first time, Matt Hardy presents his new duo, The Butcher and the Blade with the Bunny at ringside, and they'll team with Private Party in a big eight-man tag team match. This is an eight-man tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Making their way to the ring, the team of Carly Bravo, Dean Alexander, Rick Aldridge, and David Ali. Well, here are four young men making their eight-man tag team debut here in AEW. Talented kids, Charlie Bravo, very, very talented. I've seen many of David Ali's matches in and around Georgia. Got an attitude. No question about it, but I look forward to seeing what they can do here because Matt Hardy has now assembled himself quite a family, if you will. And their opponents first, being accompanied by The Bunny from Buffalo, New York, at a combined weight of 501 pounds, The Butcher and The Blade. That's I, I, I don't know what to say about this trio. I. I First of all, they're, 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 they're odd. And, and second of all, Bunny is, is not a nice person, obviously. No, well, I mean, she's got black bunny ears, so you know she's like an evil bunny. She's an evil bunny. She's an evil bunny. And take a look at Butcher, would you? Yeah, Butcher's oh a little weird. God, There's no doubt about it. I like party. his uniqueness, though. Yeah. Much different demeanor in the next two gentlemen coming out. And their opponents being accompanied by Matt Hardy from Brooklyn, New York, at a combined weight of 353 pounds, Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, Private Party. Now these guys look like a lot of fun. Yeah, they, they are a lot of fun, and uh, they are making Matt Hardy a lot of money, which, by the way, as we probably know by now, his first quarter earnings um, are going to hang man on a page. And oddly enough, Matt told me, he said, listen, I, I just signed Butcher and Blade and Buddy, but I'm going to defer their, their money until April 1st. In other words, he didn't want to give Hangman any more money. Oh, that's only a smart businessman. Yeah, that is a smart, that's a shrewd businessman. That's a treacherous businessman. Yeah, there's always, when you're doing business like that, there's always a way out. Yeah. So he's not getting any of their money until the second quarter. Therefore, Hangman and a page is not getting the money. And here we go. Here comes Blade, and here comes Butcher. I mean, these two guys know so many ways to hurt you, so many ways to take you down. Take and a look at Blade. they enjoy it, too, Tom. Yeah, they do, and that's one of the things. And they take Carly it's, Bravo down, man. You know, it's a unique team that Matt, Money Matt Hardy put together here because, you know, Matt's always been a smart businessman, and I've known him for a long time. He's always done really well, made some good investments, and even though this is an odd team that he's put together, you can already see this is going to be an effective team. Great standing switch by David Ali on Isaiah here. Ali, like I said, is a fine competitor. 5'9", 195. But there's a lot of confidence going on in the Matt Hardy camp right now. 
Good shove off by Ali. Isaiah met him with a foot. And here comes Quinn. We're talking about speedsters, man. These guys got it all. Look at this. Pick up. Oh, and a. Insecurity the back of the head. Leg trip. Are we going to see a little? Great tandem wrestling here. Very innovative. Yes, sir. And they've only gotten better. They really have only gotten better since signing away 30% of their livelihood to Matt Hardy. <laughs> with 30% of their livelihood signed away, they better get something out of the deal. Well, I would agree with that. <laughs> Ali falls behind, goes and makes the tag. And Dean Alexander now come in. You know, then again, you know, we think it's pretty crazy that, you know, a talent will sign away 30% of the earnings, but, you know, Elvis Presley signed away 50% of his earnings. Which and he had a pretty good career. <laughs> Which are, yeah. 50% of a lot of money. A lot of money. Yeah. Kind of kind of money that if I had Elvis's money, I'd have burned mine. Mm. Wow. Double drop kick to the skull. Wow, that, that's, a, that's a good bell ringer. Either side. That's my king. That's my king. Right Alexander, former middle linebacker in college. So he's a tough kid. Tough kid, but he's showboating a little bit too much in the corner. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of staying on your opponent. Staying his face. Now Aldridge in. He's big strapping guy. Look at yeah. that. Wow. Big powerhouse. Big powerhouse. Change the tempo just like that. Boy, if he connects with that. Oh, there's. Yeah. Love the butcher. He knew when to come in and when to settle it back down. Absolutely he did. And he changed the complexion of everything. It looked as if Aldridge had things going. He say, watch out here. Yeah. At the feet now of Matt Hardy. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, yeah. right into the ring post. Matt Hardy's got to earn his 30% somehow. <laughs> and you're talking about vicious. This is just a nice, not a nice person here. No, that's just uncalled for. But not only is she not a nice person, but she actually enjoys that. This coming. It's coming Wednesday on Dynamite. It's going to be Jurassic Express and Bear Country against Matt Hardy's guys. And what a match that's going to be. Butcher Blade and Private Party. Now, I'm a big fan of Bear Country. Those are two big powerhouses. So this ought to be a good mix-up. It should be. But right now, they are just wasting away Brick Aldridge here. Yeah. Man, look at, the, look at the development of Blade. Look how strong he is. Oh yeah, there's there's nothing wasted on Blade. He's all muscle and bad intent. Yeah, bad intent is right. He just blew right by Frank Gastineau, our referee that time, paying him no mind at all, sending now Aldridge in, but running in with reckless abandon, and they paid for it. The big guy got the elbow up, and here comes Ali. Series of kicks, man. Ali can do it. Head of steam, big swat that time, miss. Oh, into a power slam. One, two, and a kick. And Bravo ended uh, that, and everybody's in now. Looks like it's a Smars now. It is a big time Smars. And right now, Private Party and Butcher and Blade have, have taken everybody out except David Ali. Whoa. This is tremendous teamwork. Ali goes down in a heap and a one, two, three. They changed the momentum that quick. The winners of this match, the team of Private Party, the Butcher and the Blade. Butcher and the Blade are now 12 and one in their past 12 tag team matches, including four straight wins. And now associated with Matt Hardy, The move they called Drag the Lake. Drag the Lake? Okay. Boy, it's got Hardy fired up, doesn't it?
This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. From the desk of Kenny Omega, weighing 203 pounds, M.T. Nakazawa. Well, I don't think I've ever witnessed anything like this. Oh, give me a break. I don't think I, I've witnessed anything like this. When we get we get a, a guy like Matt Seidel, who's wrestled, just wrestled on this show. Yes. And now he's going to have to come out here again. And if he wants a shot at Kenny Omega, he's got to go through Michael. I believe that's Michael. Yeah, that is Michael Nakazawa. And his opponent from Clearwater, Florida, wearing 166 pounds, Matt Seidel. Here's the thing, Kenny Omega is champion for a reason. Kenny Omega is a smart businessman. Uh, really, is that what that is? But he can't just give an opportunity to everybody walking down the street that wants an opportunity. And Matt has to earn it. Michael Nakazawa with the apple in hand and headset on is Certainly Kenny, uh, Kenny Omega's best friend and I guess uh, his business partner here. I don't. So, he, so Matt Seidel's got to go through a couple of things here. Right. He's got to beat Michael Nakazawa, then he's got to face Kenny Omega, then he's got to beat Omega, and then if he beats Omega, he'll get a title shot. <laughs> Talking about a gauntlet to go through. That's a gauntlet. Not saying it's impossible. No. It's possible. Sure it is. And I he, mean, it's possible I might have a 40-inch vertical leap. Well, <laughs> and, and look at this. Now, a warning here from the referee, Rick Knox, right in Michael Nakazawa's face. <laughs> There's a personal reason, too, that, 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 that for Matt Seidel, not only a chance to get to Kenny Omega, but it was Michael Nakazawa who, as we know, loves the baby oil. He oiled up the top rope, the top turnbuckle, causing Matt Seidel to slip and fall in his debut here in AEW. And so there's purpose here for Seidel, and he is taking it out here on Nakazawa for many reasons. Well, if he wasn't upset in the be in before this, he's definitely upset now. Nakazawa laying those chops in nice and snug. Yes, he is. Picking him up. Nope. Turn around. Oh, big spin wheel kick from the top. It's kind of like a leg lariat spin wheel. Hooked him in the back of the calf and brought him down. Love the leg lariat, man. Nakazawa's in trouble. Not even taking his headset off. Well, there you go. Well, if he doesn't take it off, Matt's going to knock it off. And Nakazawa, as you can tell, the. Pick up, fall away slam or crucifix, if you will. One. I'm sure the auto, the I'm sure the audio engineers in the truck love the fact that he's wearing that headset out in the middle of the yeah, thing, uh, taking those bumps and getting hit with those chops. Pick up. Seidel slips behind. Oh boy, didn't need to see that. Completely unnecessary. Oh, nice kick. He went right out with it. And he wins the match. The winner of this match, Matt Seidel. Great win for Matt Seidel. He had to wrestle earlier in a tag team match. Celebration with he and his brother. Now he'll get a shot at Kenny Omega. If he goes through that, he's going to get a world title shot. Wait a minute. The world champion's out. What in the hell? Kenny Omega. Well, what do we got here? Looks like the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step for Matt Seidel. Oh! His journey is starting now. He takes that notebook, that that MacBook, if you will, and hits him on the back of the head with it. On the back. He's asking for a microphone. What the? Oh, wow. Congratulations, Matt Seidel. You've just bought yourself a one-way ticket to the Kenny Omega train. Look at me, I'm pumped up. My veins, they're popping. I'm all jacked up and I'm feeling just a little frisky. 
So you know that match that I was talking about? Forget about Dynamite, Matt. Let's do that match. Oh, I don't know. Right now. All right. How about this? Impromptu, where they're not going to go for Dynamite. They're going to have it here on Elevation. He's going for the one-winged angel. And he's got him. Well, Rick knocked one, two, three. Well, yeah. there's opportunities, and then there's that. Well, Matt Seidel had to wrestle two matches on this show, then got hit with a MacBook. I don't think the bell ever rang, Tony. The rating. Might be a little way The rating. Out. The rating. That elevation hey. rating. Hey. You can thank me. That was... That was crap, Kenny. That was absolute crap. I never wanted to be in this position. I never wanted to be here, but you made a promise. You already went back in a gentleman's agreement once. You made a promise to him. You said you were going to give him a match. That was BS. He had just gone through two matches, and you can't even promise people matches. I make the matches, and I'm going to tell you right now, Kenny, nine days from tonight, you got time to get ready, man. Nine days from tonight, you have to wrestle in nine days from tonight on Dynamite, live on Dynamite. Live on job, you have to wrestle him. Yeah, if you this. win, if you beat him, you get a shot at the title. There you go. Tony no, Khan's fair. You forced hey, me to do just it. Just edit this out. If you don't like it, cut it. Cut it. Edit it out. I'm not doing it. It's too I'm late. I'm not doing it. Then you shouldn't have said it. Tony Khan has this laid down you, the law. Man. Play Matt this Seidel's music. And he wants to play Matt Seidel's music? All right, Tony Khan said he never wanted to come on TV and take up wrestler's time, but he's literally the only person in the world that could come out here and tell Kenny Omega what to do. This match is signed for nine days away at Dynamite. It's now time for the main event as former AEW Women's Champion Riho takes on Maki Ito. With that in mind, let's go to Justin Roberts. <laughs> Your main event is set for one fall with a 20 minute. Right, Maki Ito has arrived to elevation. Uh, Justin, you were uh, talking about this being your main event. Your main event is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. In the ring from Fukuoka, Japan, Maki Ito. Maki's somewhat of a sensation here since arriving here in AEW. I mean, we saw her first in the, uh, the women's eliminator tournament. Well, you know, she calls herself the cutest in the world, and you know, after that entrance, I gotta kinda agree with her. She's cute as she can be. Speaking of cute, here's another great athlete. And her opponent, from Shinagawa City, Japan, Riho! She's got the best smile in all of AEW. It's... Yeah, but don't let that smile fool you. She's intense. Yeah, she is. Former AEW, first AEW Women's World Champion. This should be a great matchup. We're talking, though, as far as experience. Riho with 14 years of experience. Maki Ito only four. And Bryce Rimsburg is the referee, and this is our main event here on AEW Dark Elevation. And Maki Ito can only make a name for herself here against Rio. Yeah, I really like Maki Ito's charisma. Yeah, she... I also love the thing where she taps her head before she drops the big head butt. Yeah. I love it. The Kokeshi. Kokeshi. Rio, of course, has been a fixture on AEW, and then, of course, when the pandemic hit, she was 
in Japan for quite a while. And now that things have kind of loosened up a little bit. A little bit. Vaccine helps. Yeah. People are getting back to normal. We can see we see her. We see uh, Maki Ito both here. Good to have him here. The international talent of different flavors. Good to mix it up. Wow. Wow, that was smooth. She does that a lot, and they almost never see it coming. But a hair takedown. There's a warning nearby Bryce Rensberg. Oh, <laughs> she tried to Kokeshi that time, and that time Riho saw it coming. Saw it coming. No one's home. Well, those kicks by Rio. They, They're what? snug. Yeah, They're they, in there. They, yeah. She finds her mark, too. I mean, she's. Yeah. I mean, obviously, she's. For she two years, she's going to know where to put the kick. Exactly. Well, there you go. Known for her very hard headbutts. And I guess she's just getting fired up by hitting the turnbuckle pad up top. Oh, at that time, Reels. Oh, the oh, 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 good counter. The Kokeshi to the midsection. It found its mark and it's changed the complexion of this match. Who's the cutest in the world? <laughs> See, I told you. <laughs> Your uh, Japanese is pretty good, Tony. I think I can order cold water in Japanese. Wait, really? Kodi Mizu. I know that. And uh, Chotomate, which means hold on a second. Okay. Nice back elbow. Yeah. Nice bulldog. Yeah, bulldog hair that time. How many times did you, do you know how many times you wrestled in Japan? Uh, no, Tony, I, I can't. Like, uh, I can't even remember how many matches I've had. So. <laughs> I'm sure you can. I was, I've been in Japan once, and that was back in 1991. I, I just remember my first trip to Japan, my head was at one wall and my foot was the other wall in my hotel room. <laughs> I ordered a club sandwich with small finger bites and four french fries, and it was 35 bucks. Oh, Makito. I wanted to know who ate my french fries. Makito with a big forearm hitting the far. In the small of the back, here's the one, the two, got a two count nice that time. When Makito knows the pressure points, doesn't she? She knows where to hurt. Look at this, see how she got that leg yeah, and the knee across? She's smart to work that lower back. You know, that's one of Rio's advantages, that flexibility and, and being able to, to counter things with her flexibility. If she tightens that back up, she's taking away one of you know Rio's advantages. Absolutely, uh, because Rio's been able to escape with her flexibility, like you talked about, Paul. But she's worked on the small of the back here. There's a veter there's a veteranship in Rio. She knew the ropes was close. She worked her way to the ropes. Maybe Makito didn't realize she was that close to the ropes. That's smart. It's a veteran move. Ring awareness. Yeah, it's the intelligence of a former women's world champion here in AEW is what it is. And here she's finally back, and that forearm found its mark. At least well, Makito didn't think so. Just shrug shrugging it off. She says, hit me again. Go ahead, make it three. I think that one kind of found its mark. Wow, now exchanging blows here. Good return fire. Rio hits with so much speed off of the ropes with a great drop kick. Right and, on point. Yes, sir, and Ito down on the floor. Here comes Rio after it. Watch out, Rio, crossbody. From the apron to the floor. Can't pin her on the floor, get her in the ring. And that's exactly what Bryce Rimsburg is telling Rio now. But that certainly changed the tide of this one, at least at this moment. Here goes Rio through the ropes again. She'll try a cover here. Hook in the far leg. And Ito got out in a two count. Great matchup so far with these two ladies. Yeah, I love this style. It's very innovative, very creative. And nice leg trip into the yeah. second rope. After a great cartwheel to get out of it. And there's Rio with that broad smile of hers getting the fans behind her here. Oh, is that 619? Right to the ropes it went. Now she's going to climb up top. Ito is still on the high risk, high reward. Now Ito now up top here to meet her. Oh, another crossbody that time. A cover. One, two, no, a two count. Second crossbody here by Rio. First one was on the outside. This one found its mark again. And right now, Maki Ito looks in trouble to me. She's going to pick her up again. No, Maki Ito blocked that shot. Spins her over DDT. How about that? 
Wow, that one connected. Jammed the whole cervicals right up. That's that C3, C2 just got jammed into your neck. Your hands go numb on those, Tony. And she's working on the legs here and has her in all to a Boston Crab. More pressure on that lower back. Yes, yeah, see, that has been the focal point of the attack here by Maki Ito. And now Rio reaching, trying to guide both of them towards the ropes. You see that Bryce Rensburg is right there. And she was close, but she was pulled back. And look at her. Nice right. counter by Rio. One, two, and no. Oh. Boy, that up. was close. Here goes Ito again. Starts with a foot stomp. And we'll hit the ropes. Followed in by a running knee that time. Great counter that time and a pickup. Northern nice. Light suplex. One, wow. two, and a two. Great. Only a two. I don't know if right now Rio may be getting frustrated or not. She thought maybe that was it. It's incredible bridge. You know, I could bridge like that at one time. I right? yes, I, I've seen. I'm do totally that. lying, Tony. I okay, well like I was going to put. It I over appreciate anyway. you putting me over. I'll I, give you that five dollars. What teammates later. do, buddy? <laughs> to the top of the turnbuckle. Here he goes again. Trying the double stomp. Missed. Ito moved out of the way. Rio missed that time. And Tornado DDT. Oh, yes, sir. Nice little momentum shift there. Don't forget, coming up this coming Wednesday on TNT, St. Patrick's Day Slam featuring the first time ever a Lights Out Anything Goes match on Dynamite. And we are going to see in our main event, Dr. Britt Baker go up against Thunder Rosa. It's been an explosive rivalry that will explode on Dynamite on TNT coming up this coming Wednesday. And speaking of explosive, what about this one? These two ladies have been explosive in the ring with their offense. Yeah, they haven't pulled any punches yet whatsoever. These forearm shivers, they're trading back and forth. Uh, they're in there. Well, they are laying it in, man. They are what they call hauling off and just laying it in. Here goes Mike Edo, repeated blows. Mike Edo is going to take a little bit extra time and roll up that time. Oh, the double stomp. In the midsection, gut stomp. Like the gut stomp, set her up. Another high yeah. risk maneuver and here. And Maki Ito trying to get up. She cannot. She's prone. There's the double stomp from the top. One of Rio's favorite moves and a cover. One, two, no. Wow. She's pretty confident on that cover. Yes, yeah, she was. And you can see the surprise on her face that time. Maki Ito showing some resilience here. A lot of fight. Again, well, the Rio was trying to go to the ropes one more time, and Ito was preventing her from doing so by hanging on to the right leg. She kicks her off, and let's see what she's going to try next. Well, Rio said, okay, I'll go up again. Oh. A headbutt, there it is. There's that headbutt that's, right to the abdomen. That's her headbutt. Going to try to get all oh, that time the running knee right up against the side of the head. Here he comes, she comes again and rolls over in a half crab. Nice counter. Wow, it was a great counter. And again, Rio may have to go to the ropes to break this. You know, I gotta admire Maki Ito. She used that counter to go right back to the lower back again. That's been her mission this whole match is attack that lower back, wear it down. And she's done a great job of, of sticking with her plan of tearing down the lower back. Dragging her to the center of the ring. Again. Oh, there's that headbutt. Yeah, the Kokeshi. And this time it was on the, the first one was on the midsection. This one was on the lower, on back. The lower back. And we are seeing a vicious, vicious side of Maki Ito. Look at oh, this. That just looks painful. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure after all the punishment she's taken on the back and she can take much more. Pretty good strategy by Maki Ito. Now that time, Bryce Rensburg turned over to the timekeeper and said, no, no, she's still in it. Well, just the flexibility here at Riho is the only thing that's keeping her in this fight. Still working over the small of the back. Been working over the back of Rio, and Rio again goes to the ropes. Her only recourse here. That's and she it. still won't let go. Boy, this has been a great game plan for Maki Ito, and that's that veteran leadership, too, you know, of Rio to get to that ring, ring awareness. That ring will save your, save your tail every now and then. Uh, it saved her about four times from uh, 
from Ito's work on the lower back here. Now she's going to try to drag her back to the center of the ring again. And this time she just pounds the midsection of Rio. That's a little bit different. Oh, she's working both sides of the yeah. same area, so it's effective. It's working. I'm sure right now it's hard yeah. for Rio to even think about moving. Paul, what a great main event for our first ever episode of Elevation. Oh, they've been tearing it down. They. This has been really great. Here she goes. Diving headbutt. No one's home. She missed it. Diving headbutt in she Rio. She stunned herself a little bit. Double knees. Double knees. And that, that, wiped, that wiped her out. One, two, three. Great match. The winner of this match, Rio. She calls the double knees Somato. And after Maki Ito missed the headbutt, are the Kokeshi men. It was the Somato, are the double knees, and Rio picks up another win for a 13th here in AEW. Boom. Somato, that's what she calls the double knees? Yep. Yeah, it works. And listen, if, if she can talk, if she can knock Makaki Ito out with the double knees, then she's done something. She can knock her out. Rio gets the win. Paul, great working with you, buddy. It's an honor, Tony. Thank you. We'll shake hands. You I don't mind shaking hands with you. Okay. Make it weird. We'll see you tomorrow night on Dark on AEW's YouTube channel.